So let me ask you a question. What would happen if you, in front of your dad, you told your mom to shut up? What would your dad do? Now, you're either watching this, you're a parent, and you already got the chills and you're pissed off. Or your second reaction is, I don't know how he would have reacted because he was never there. Either way, the point is made why this clip that we posted just six days ago in six days has gotten eight million views, and it's called the Shut Up Challenge. Take a look at this. All these videos that go viral on TikTok, I don't know if you've seen it, it's a prank. The mother, the mother and the daughter, or the mother and the son play a prank on their dad. The daughter tells the mom, shut up, mom. And it, you just see the dad all of a sudden, wait, what did you say? It's a prank, it's a prank, it's a prank. See, that's, a, that's the fear. You don't talk to your mom like that. Pretty wild, right? You see how the dad immediately reacts and it's a prank. By the way, here's what I want you to think about. What challenges that we face in America today? Economy, gas prices, inflation, you know, Ukraine, Russia, taxes. Add whatever you want to it. I'm willing to tell you maybe the number one biggest problem we have in America today is fatherlessness because our boys are being raised without order, without responsibility, without challenge, and moms can do it to their best of abilities. But there's nothing like a father to be there to say you cannot cross the line. That fear needed in a young boy's life is super necessary as well as a girl the other day my wife is reading a book called raising up girls and she keeps sending screenshots babe look at the role a father plays in a girl it's not just for but look at the role you play babe look at the role you play. I said babe I know that's why I recommended the book to you what's the point here I'm gonna share you some stats about fatherlessness and five things fathers can do when raising future leaders of America Give value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Just in the last week, you know, when I think about myself, I've said this many times, I get way too much credit on being a father. My dad taught me a lot of this stuff on how to be a father and I got immersed in realizing how he raised a leader. I want to be able to duplicate that. So this past week was my daughter's birthday. This, she turned eight years old. Since two years old, I've been taking her on a date night on her birthday. We go out, I open the door and then this year was interesting. We had a serious conversation and it's just her and I and we started talking about boys and she got a little bit uncomfortable, but I talked about it with boys I said babe you're beautiful you're sweet you're nice you're kind you care and all of those qualities are qualities that men are attracted to but you got to value yourself you know why I treat you this way why because one day I want you to have that as a standard that on how a man should treat you and she's like that makes sense and then we start talking boyfriends I said you think I'm worried if you're gonna have a boyfriend one day yes I'm not babe I want you to be happy I want you to have that life but I want you to respect yourself I want you to respect your standards and I want them to realize how lucky they are to be with somebody like you so that makes sense so it opened up the relationship on the conversation we had then Yesterday's Memorial Day. Kids are waking up. We have this party. We're going to have 100 plus people at the house. I'm seeing them in the back already going on the slides. In the morning, look how proud. This was such an awesome moment. Senna comes upstairs at 7.30. Dad, you won't believe what just happened. You will not believe what just happened. What happened, babe? Do you know what Dylan just did for me? What did Dylan do for you? Dylan woke up early, Daddy, and he made breakfast for me. He made French toast with syrup and blueberries and raspberries, and he made breakfast and brought it to me. I said, how good was it? Daddy, it was a 10 it was awesome. And Dylan's standing there proud to be an older brother, taking care of his sister. And then boom, they go to the slide. And it's Memorial Day. I'm trying to get these guys to realize what Memorial Day is all about because it's my job to pass it down to them. Just like when I joined the army, the sergeants and drill sergeants taught me what Memorial Day really meant. So what do we do? I say, guys, pack your bags. We're leaving. We're going to go on a special trip. I even took my two-year-old Brooklyn with me. What do we do? I found the local Memorial Cemetery. We go to Fort Lauderdale Memorial Cemetery and we're there I sit him down. I say, here's what we're going to do. We went to Publix. We bought a few hundred flowers, okay? And it's like 25, 26 of these different flowers to put. And I sat him down. I said, all these people, the reason why you can play iPad, the reason why you can go and play outside and be safe, the reason why we can do what we did, the reason why your dad can run a business, the reason why you can watch YouTube is because some people fought for our freedom. And this place is all about people that serve so you and I can be free. I want you to take one of these flowers, go to one of the plots, pray over the family, then put the flowers down and go to the next one and the next one and the next one and then we'll leave. So you see this going. I saw my son Dylan sitting like this praying. Senna's like this praying. Tico's walking around. He's got his own style. Brooklyn's just putting flowers. She's just happy to put flowers and she's just saying amen. That's her prayer, right? She's going out doing her thing. But they're realizing how awesome this country is. Then, right afterwards, I say, God, can we go home? Everybody's waiting. It's her birthday. I'm like, nope, we're not going home. What are we doing? Do you guys realize all these people that bought merch from us, if our viewers don't watch the content, if our viewers don't purchase stuff they do for our customers. If it's not for them, we can't have the life that we have. So what are we doing? We made a list of all the people that bought from us merch, Valuetainment merch, Memorial Day weekend. 
who bought it in Fort Lauderdale within a 30 mile radius. What do we do? We text them, and this is what the text said. If you didn't respond to the text, we were gonna come to your house. The text was, this is Valuetainment Shipping Department. We were wondering if you're home because we'd like to deliver the merch that you purchased in the next 15 to 30 minutes. Those who responded, we literally showed up. One lady is covering herself because she's only got a top on. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe you're here. And my kids are giving the merch then. Why? Because they have to realize service, hospitality, that we're lucky to have this life because the people that work with us are sales for our customers. All of these things are things we do because I don't like entitled people. I don't like entitled kids. And entitled kids are entitled because of the way they're raised. So let me get this straight. I want to be able to raise kids so one day I can be friends with these guys and I want them to be around me all the time. Do I want to be around entitled people? No. If they become like that, is a part of it is on me. I got to make sure that doesn't happen to them. A part of it is on you and I. Now watch this. Stats to validate this. Here's some stats that we got from Father Absence Crisis in America. You ready for these stats? Let's go through them. Poverty. Four times greater risk of poverty without a father in the house. More likely to have behavioral problems. Two times greater risk of infant mortality. More likely to go to prison. More likely to commit crime. Seven times more likely to be pregnant as teen. More likely to face abuse and neglect. More likely to abuse drugs and alcohol. Two times more likely to suffer obesity. Two times more likely to drop out of high school. You want me to continue? There's a bunch of stats like this here. Children and father absent homes account for 71% of all high school dropouts. 90% of all homeless and runaway children. Let me say one more time. 90% of all runaway and homeless children. 63% of youth suicides. And across America in 2022, data shows that approximately 18.3 million kids who live without a father in the home, equaling one in every four, live in a house without a father. So they can get away without saying, shut up, mom, because mom's going to try to hit them back or discipline them. But mom can't put it into place the same way dad can. Sometimes we've seen some clips where mom comes out and puts the kid in his place, but it's different when father's there. If you're watching, say, I got a lot of questions about parenting. I want to be able to ask somebody and say, am I doing this the right way or not? Do I put him in college or not? This is why we have the app Manek. You have access to parents that will respond back to you because you're paying for the service, almost like a consultant. I need an answer on this. I got four people here for you to consider asking about parenting. One of them is Kim and Tom Ellsworth. They have two girls. The oldest one, Bailey, is going to rise. She's got a 4.6 GPA. How did you raise kids that have a 4.6 GPA? Their youngest is a sixth grader with a 5.06 GPA. And they know everything about schooling because they're going through it. Tom was a professor, all this stuff. Parenting can ask them questions if you want to know things from us. Jen, we have four kids. We have a lot of challenges we go through with our kids. If you want to know what we do with our kids, you can also connect us as well. And there's plenty of other people on the category of parenting and education. They can ask them on homeschooling, raising kids, boys, girls, all of that. Download the app Manek, start Manecting today. Now watch this. I can give you more stats. I got plenty of it. Watch this one here right now. It says the large share of dads, moms say, being a parent is an important aspect of who they are. I'm sitting with Bill Maher. He asked me a question. He says, why do you want so many kids? What's the purpose of living if you don't have kids? Like, I'm not that in love with the human race where I think like, whoa, what we need is more of them. I said to him, what else is the point of life? What else am I living for? To be rich for what? To have the cars for what? To be famous for what? What is the point? There's a proverb that says there's three things every man should do. Have a son, plant a tree, write a book. Every single one of it is what? It outlives you. The whole purpose of life to outlive you. That's a part of the legacy, but watch the percentage wise here. Percent of parents who say being a parent is uh, aspects of who they are as a person. Fathers, 24%, the most important thing. 61%, one of the most important things, which is 85% of review. Mothers, 35% is the most important thing they've done in life being a mother, and it's 53%, one of the most important, that's 88%. This is the beautiful part about having kids. I got four of them. I'd have 20 more. I absolutely love having kids. It's not easy, but it's one of the most rewarding things you'll ever do in your life. Let me continue. If you think about father-son or father-daughter relationship, again, I started it off asking you a question saying, what would have happened if in front of your father, you told your mother to shut up? What would happen? You either said, Oh, my dad would whoop me. He would put me in my place. And you said, I don't know. My father wasn't around. Both of them are validated by this point here. But now if you had a father and it was somebody that lived with you and you had a lot of experience with them, think about the moments when you're learning how to ride a bike. That moment. I can tell you where we were when Dylan and Tico learned how to ride a bike. We were at our Addison office, the insurance. This is COVID. And they're in the backyard and I'm holding the bike. Tico goes, my oldest goes. Ten minutes later, Dylan goes. And he's biking and screaming, ah! And then he's like, oh, I got this. I got a bone for one hour and a half in a parking lot. They're just riding a bike. Or the moment when your kids are swimming. This weekend, my youngest daughter, Brooklyn, we can't get him out of the pool. She just keeps jumping in. 
and jump in. The further I go, the more she wants to jump in, jump in, jump in. She's learned how to swim. What does it feel like when you're holding your kid when you swim? Or when you take your daughter on a date? Or when the father and son are fishing and you catch a fish for the first time? Come on, boy! Or you, they asked the question, they said, what is your fondest memory of you and your father? They asked boys, said, wrestling with my dad. Think about those memories with dad you're wrestling, trying to be beat your old man. Put him in a chokehold. Yes. Nowadays, when I'm having dinner, my sons will come behind me and they'll do one of this jujitsu stuff. And I'm like, guys, you're no longer six years old. I can no longer eat and you choke me. You actually are choking me. Stop, right? Vinny is always being choked and Vinny has to ask them, stop. You can't do this anymore. These are moments. These are things that boys need. Couple things to be thinking about before I wrap up. Five points. Number one, the impact of absence. We've covered it. Number two, emotional and social development. Very important. Number three, conflictive and academic success. Number four, role modeling. And number five, Community impact. Let me give you one of the things about uh, role modeling. So my oldest son is big into politics. He likes politics. My youngest son likes sports. But they're around a lot of people that have opinions. Brittany will come over. Adam will come over. They're around the value team. And they'll watch live podcasts. And they hear people doing debates. And if I even catch them, give a lazy opinion. Well, such and such president is horrible. Tell me why. Uh, oh, because they, they suck. Why? So you can't talk like this. Why not? Because you're showing to the world that you don't know how to reason. You sound like everybody else who just has an opinion without any research being out. You can't say something like that. Now watch this. If you've ever read the book, Outwitting the Devil, phenomenal book. I read this years ago. Brandon just reminded me of this. Napoleon Hill's 1938 nonfiction, Hill describes a drifter as someone who accepts whatever life throws at them without protest or fight. Hill says that drifting without purpose is the first cause of failure. Listen, next four words, powerful. Careless expression of opinions can lead to drifting, which can then lead to hypnotic rhythm, which can prohibit accurate thinking. Keyword, careless expression of opinion. They give an opinion. Why'd you say that? Oh, because I said that. No, you can't say that as a bit, David. You have to give me the reasons. Uh, 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 uh. Give me your reasons. Well, because of this. No, how about this? Uh, then go research and come back and give me some real reasons why you believe what you do. Okay, I will. Okay, so boom, back. So that debate part where you're not letting them be lazy with their opinions. Most of America's lazy. Well, I wasn't lazy with opinions at the beginning. Until I'm like, I got to put some time into this, right? These are small little things that develops better leaders in the future because we're challenging them to be tougher. Or else, kid goes to school, gives an opinion. I was like, well, that person believes in this. Based on what? No, that's not how life works. So anyways, if you right now grew up with a father, and if I was to ask you, who's the one person in your life that set a high level of standard, expectation, toughness, where you feared a little bit, that helped you become tougher in life and never let you give up or any of that stuff, you may say your mom, but a part of it of somebody you feared that kicked your ass, it's generally a father. Unfortunately, America, society led by America, we're trying to make men be more like women, and we're trying to make women be more like men. Why don't we just have men become men and women become women and realize we need each other? But in this context, if you're a leader doing something big in your life and you're tough, odds are a very strong role model, a father had a big role in you becoming a leader. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And by the way, if you want to know which immigrant community that comes to America makes the most money, you know who it is? It's Indian families. Why is that? I did a video on it. Fascinating on how they raise their kids. If you've never seen it, click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.